You done fricked it up. Why are they packing it with so much frickin' bubble wrap? This thing, this thing isn't even valuable. Why would you pack it like this? What the frick ever? Darts located under a platform. Well, kid, you under a freaking platform. Included is the blaster, one 10 round magazine, 20 Nerf Week darts, and the instructions. Four AA alkaline batteries are required for this blaster to function, and it will not function without them. To install, remove the battery cover, put them in, and then put the battery drawer back on. I knew it was bad. I didn't know it was going to be this bad. Uh, but the Nerf Alpha Strike Flight, a blaster I picked up for 25 United States dollars, and oh boy, this was a uh, this is this is an it was an experience to say at the that's nice. Um, let's just get the overview done with. So up at the front there is an strike barrel lug, but there is no strike barrel lug notch. So if you put on a larger barrel, it's gonna flop around. And it won't be as stable as like a strife where it has a notch on it. Um, well, here is a little brick uh, that you can, I guess, put your hand here, which is actually extremely uncomfortable for me, in my opinion. Um, I have larger than average size hands, so take that into account. Uh, is where the four double A batteries go in. This is not properly designed. This is stupid and objectively wrong. It will break eventually. Uh, if you're like me and you take your batteries out after you, out of your blasters after every time you use them, because it's in your blaster. But to open this, you have to, there's a little, little thing right here, a little, I guess, button. Push that down, pull this down, this pops out, where you can find your four AA alkaline batteries. To close it, push down, push that in again, make sure it's down all the way, push up. Oh my freaking... It's stiff, and it's extremely stiff, and the hinge is riding on plastic, so this is going to break eventually, and that's just unavoidable when you do something like this. It's not a proper battery door. This is just an improperly designed part, and it's feel, it just contributes to how cheap it feels. Moving up here, you have an actual, like, at least decent sling point, um, the only decent one on here, in my opinion, for like a single point, or I guess a two-point sling. If that's your, your fancy. Uh, you have an N-Strike tactical rail up here. The jam door, which, uh, well, I'll just, I'll let you watch the clip and form your opinions on that one. Modify, this is stock, so. Are you kidding me? That's a joke, right? Is that a joke? Yeah, not good at all. This jam door feels way worse than the, the Phoenix 2.0. It comes off way easier. And that was, I didn't think that was going to happen. I didn't, I didn't know that was going to happen and to get it back in it's even harder arguably it's easier to pull this thing off than to put the jam door back on which should tell you something um moving down here to the grip it is very cramped it's small it's just i have a larger than average size hand i wear a size large glove i'm it, it's cramping to me and i like firing this thing for 400 and 18 darts straight, it just became cramping on my hand. I wouldn't want to use this long term in an R4 or even short term. Um, moving to the rev trigger, you can actually bypass the lock on switch. There's a lock usually in these. Um, if you push hard enough, you can bypass it and actually pre rev. It hurts to do that because you're putting a lot of force down on there, but it's possible. You can do it without trying, is my point. Um, but it just, it's, there's tension there. So you're like actively pressing that into your finger and it hurts. Moving on to the firing, uh, trigger and the trigger guard. Um, it's okay. It's, it's, it's bad. It's bad. I've had numerous issues with this trigger locking up 
and being stuck in battery, which means the pusher is stuck forward in the firing position and wouldn't let up until I would too. See, like right now, it just did it right now. So it's it's not it's not forward all the way, so you have to do that. And can I recreate that real quick? If I can. So pusher is pushed out. Now it's back. Um, mag release is inside the trigger guard, which I despise anyone who does that. It is not fun. It is not okay. It feels uncomfortable, and it's very frustrating to deal with. This is a just crappy rev trigger. Um, moving down to a mag well. Well, it's a piece of... Starting out with our fleet darts that I've put it in the included magazine. I put the flight up on my chronograph and I got an average of 74 feet per second, which is above the UE par of 70 feet per second. And that's about as much objective information as I can give you. Now on my final thoughts and personal opinions. Do not buy one of these blasters. For 25 US dollars, which is what a Strife should cost right now, doesn't cost. Um, basically paying for the built-in stock, the 10 round magazine, the 20 Nerf Elite darts, and that's about it. You're not getting much for your money, in my opinion. However, if you want to get a Strife, which you can buy depending on where you go. If you go on Amazon, you get a modular strife with a six round magazine, six Nerf weight darts, and one foregrip included is about 30 to 34 bucks. If you find it on sale, sometimes you can get for about 30 at best. Um, if you go on eBay, you can find blue ones, uh, camo, you know, orange, the modules, whatever. You can find those, you can get them fairly cheap if you know where to look. Um, I'd highly recommend getting a strife. It's better in every way. It's smaller, than this. It's not, you know, symmetrical, but whatever, who cares? I just recommend getting a Strife. It's so much better, and it's just a better blaster. No, the FPS isn't as high, but the Strife is still doing something better, and that's modulability. Like, it's more modular than, you know, the flight. Barrel log, end strike rail, end strike rail, stock attachment point. It works with all end strike mags, including Busby mags that I've tested, and it just it's a better blaster to pick up. Um, so if I had to choose in a stock class Nerf War between this and the Strife, I'm picking the Strife. Sorry, it's this is not good. Um, another thing to mention about this is just the lack of trying. Um, I almost feel like them doing this was intentional to kind of just save more money here. Like we can chop out little bits here and here to save fractions of a cent but over a production run that's probably tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. But like, there's no reason for this lack of effort. And I get it, this is an old blaster and, and it's not recent, but just the fact that it's like this and it's gotten this bad, like I never realized it was this bad and Yes, this mag, like, it works in the strife and whatnot, but, like, it feels just terrible. It, you just see that? My muscle memory wants to go here now. It feels terrible. It's not good. It's horrible mag quality. But if you notice, I'm not actually struggling to force this mag in. This isn't the mag's fault. It's the mag well's fault in this blaster. This, the locks and the mag release are so strong and so stiff because of the plastic springs that it doesn't like to even accept the mag that came with it in. And I've tried every single mag in my collection. Drum mags, I've tried 
straight mags, I've had curved mags, I've tried 10, 6, 15, uh, 18, 22s, and everything else in between, and nothing will actually go in here well enough that it's not rough in on the insertion. If you do buy one of these, which I don't recommend, I recommend holding in this mag release when you go to reload your mag. It's a little bit smoother, it's still gritty, it's still rough, it's still annoying to deal with, but you can make it work. I know this is a fun thoughts and opinions. I'm a little emotional because I've spent $50 on two of these damn things. I bought one, it broke, and I had to buy a second one because I thought it was a lemon. It was a lemon, but also it's just terrible design and a piece of crap. Do not buy one. I know I'm scattered. I'm being pissed because I spent my money on these damn things. Just put your money somewhere else. I've shown you guys what you can turn one of these into, and it's really cool to take a strife and make it your own. What's not cool is to glue shut your freaking blaster. This is solvent welded. There are not one, but there's what? I think there's two? Is there even two? Yeah, two screws in here. One, two over there. And it's shameful. Now, I did get a look at the internals, and this is running off the same pusher style or geared system like the, the Phoenix 2.0 was. And um, yeah, it's not worth its weight in anything. And it's terrible. So, this entire process of reviewing this blast was trash, but I hope you guys enjoyed my suffering. Thank you guys for watching. You guys are awesome. You guys feel awesome. If you guys like what I do here on my own support channel, please consider subscribing. It is free. You guys can always change your mind later and unsubscribe, but hey, subscribe. Remember, guys, as always, the hair might be fake, but the reviews aren't, and neither are my opinions. Stay safe. God bless. Phase one foam signing off. Stay tactical. And I'm not bald.